Welcome to the Light and Bread Show. Oh, 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 oh. Light and Bread, Light and Bread, Light and Bread, Light and Bread. Oh, oh. And okay, what's up, podcast fam? Today I have an exciting guest. Her name is Corby Mitlide, and uh, she is a spiritual counselor or a devil worshiper. You decide. All I know is she has gotten vegetables thrown out her head in spite also being a Hilton Diamond because she has traveled all over the East and West Coast making money, giving her spiritual gifts. And she's also the author of uh, several published books and her, her website does look extremely professional. Uh, and people are actually saying she is a marketing expert. So if you want to know how the best way to present your books. That alone is reason to get a hold of Corby. So Corby, tell us about yourself. Jump in there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, been doing this work professionally for 30 years. Started reading when I was 18 in 1973. And yes, that tells you how old I am. Um, back then we were all hippies. I grabbed the James Bond 007 tarot deck from Spencer and started reading. Uh, awesome. Read for friends for 20 years making sure that my ego was out of the way, the message was clear. And then all of a sudden in the early 90s, I could do hands-on healing and talk to dead people with no training. That's when the universe handed me my draft notice and said, you're working for us. So I did it part-time. Meanwhile, very checkered career, actress, author, inspirational speaker, video producer, legal assistant, executive recruiter, writer for the graphic novel series, ElfQuest. Psychic work always on the side. 9-11, when the towers were burning, I turned to my husband. I said, look, I need to do the psychic work full time. People need to know there are other answers out there. He said, I believe you could do it. So for one more year, I worked corporate to make sure that I could do the psychic work and make a living. Once I was sure, I basically went into the boss, peed on the desk and left figuratively. And I've never looked back. Six days a week, 14 hours a day. I read about a thousand people a year and I get to get up in the morning. I don't have to get up in the morning. That's the key. Boom, Ben, she said it all. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say you peed on the desk literally or? or... Figuratively, I oh. did not. Oh. But it's just basically, I don't care what you want to offer me. I don't care how terrible you think I am that I'm quitting and leaving you in the lurch. I don't care, bye. Okay, so. okay. So you used to have a tarot card deck that was 007, is that for real? Swear to God, remember the movie Live and Let Die came out with Jane Seymour as Solitaire, the card reader, and yeah. it was the James Bond 007 tarot deck. I mean, we all bought it because we were all hippies. We That's had the awesome. Ellison belt bottoms and I'm the fringe one. jackets and the decks. Do you, do you still have it or what? Oh God, that thing wore out. I read so many people, I have to change everything. <laughs> Perfect. Every year, get a new oh, deck. That's, At this that's point, cool. I read with one tarot deck. Can we do it? I'm not sure. She disappeared it's in because there she's a magician. No, it's because <laughs> she disappeared. I'm trying to show she's it so magical. I can't no, stand it's, it. it's the damn she's... green screen. But I have one tarot deck and I have eight oracle decks. And I even have a deck for kids because if I'm reading her, you know, somebody's mom at a show and the kid is two years old and she's going, mommy, 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 want a card, want a card. And the mother is going to say to me, do me a favor, just give the kid a card, will you? And the kid picks a card and I'm going to go, oh, look, muffin, yeah. No, you don't do that. Kid has nightmares. Oh, so um, I've got a little deck that's full of kittens and puppies and they can have a kitten and they can get a card read and then I can go back and read the parent normally. Oh, oh with this, trust yeah. me, doing what we do, there's a whole different business paradigm that you got to deal with. It just is. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, um, I, uh, I used to be in speech classes as a kid. I, I, I've come a long way thanks to really good teachers, but I sometimes still butcher words because they're not used in common language. Uh, like, is it called a, a, a historic? Is that what it's called? What? Like, a, the, the historic teachings? Is that what a, it's called? You mean Akashic records? 
Is that, is that it? AK? Spell it. Spell okay. it. A K A S H I C. That's Akashic. The Akashic records are basically everything you have ever done or will ever do on a different plane. And everybody's got a book. So if you want to figure out a past life, mm -hmm. you go to your Akashic records and you can okay. find out what went on. Because, you know, we've all had past lives. If you really think uh -huh. you're smart enough to get it done in one, no. Uh -huh. But the thing is, and this is where Bible people get it really mixed up. They say, the Bible says we're only here once. And I go, yes, you're right too. Because uh -huh. it is the soul that comes back time and time again. The lion recipe, the Corby recipe, we're one and done. And our story is what's in the Akasha. I am like pretty sure that in a past life, I was a misogynistic man. I, I'm not really sure my financial status, but I'm pretty sure I was a misogynistic man because I feel like I had to come back, learn to be a woman. And and it's it's hard not to, hey, Hong Kong. You, you know, you're, I, I don't know about the misogynistic, but the man part, yeah. Of course, <laughs> the soul has to come back. Uh, either gender, you have to learn from both sides. Me, 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time I come in male, 20% of the time is female. And the female is when I do the tough work. So yeah, you were absolutely on target. No, I mean, I I, I think I, I have some karma in this life from the way I was to women in a, a previous life. I'm going to be honest. Uh -huh. I, I feel like I have a lot of work to do with helping women to to heal and like uh like you know sometimes I'm like you know like one of the reasons I think I don't really want to talk about this but you know the transgender thing is trending is because it's a little on it's being in your look your human body is a thing you know and like uh and like I definitely I am a woman like I don't want to even go there but sometimes I'm like this is this is karma for something in a past life I just have a feeling like it like like I, like I just oh yeah <laughs> look my as far as my story goes um i came in by the time I was 11, I had a Dolly Parton figure, literally put a brunette wig on her and that was it. Um, but this person came in to learn that women are more than their bodies. They're allowed to say no, but my story was set up so that I had an alcoholic mother who told me the exact opposite. And that's how I lived. Mm -hmm. And so I had to deal with breast cancer three times. Mm -hmm. um, third time it was second primary, danger clock back to zero because basically upstairs said, look, we need you down there to do a lot of teaching. We're going to remove the problem. So mm -hmm. they took the rack, they took the ovaries. I went from a Dolly Parton figure to a fat fire plug with permanent side effects. Mm -hmm. um, but that was 19 years ago. I'm fine. I'm here. I have a much better understanding of who I am without the sexual component, still extraordinarily happily married to a great guy mm -hmm. who I mean, this happened when we were 18 months into the marriage and he looked at me and said, am I going to miss them? Yeah, they were gorgeous, but I married you, not them. So he's an example of the kind of guy I should learn to be when I'm a guy. So you see, it's, it's, that's how karma wraps itself into a big package. It's not simple black and white. And it's well, not good person, bad person. It's what do you want to learn? Well, yeah. And just because I say I have car, I feel like I have some karma. That's not to say that being a woman is bad karma. We, I mean, nope. there's a lot of fun in being a woman. I mean, why not? These are fun to look at. But, <laughs> you know, I, I make little buttons. I don't have one of my buttons on me, but I wanted to put, uh, I wanted to make uh, booty buttons and, and titty buttons and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and sell them around town. Uh, and I was thinking like, actually, uh, titty buttons make good breast cancer awareness buttons because why? Let's 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 save the tits. Like let's preserve mm -hmm. these. Let's not get to cancer. Let's save them. Like what kind of health choices? Like what do you you like my breast button ideas? Just put because I, 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 I want to get Martha Stewart on a button. <laughs> just I'm done. I'm sorry. Like, okay. like, I'm done. But like yeah, I that's what when I have stupid ideas. That's what I think about titty buttons. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I do. Like somebody so, has to do it. Somebody <laughs> has to bring awareness, and that's your way of doing it. That's all it is. So, uh, but let's uh, uh, let's get back to you. Um, uh, I gotta find my notes. Sometimes my I really need to clean my computer monitor. My bad. Okay, can you tell me about you got the magic? Who needs a genie? Uh, yep. 
Okay. Yes, the A-Lister's Guide to Holistic Expo Success. And we just revised that because um, the original one came out in 2020. And then, of course, COVID, everything went. So basically, um, I was on the road for 18 years, 45 weekends a year, 45,000 miles on the car doing holistic expos, psychic fairs, you name it. My mm -hmm. nickname was the Travel Channel. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, herniated disc, pinched nerve. Yeah, I mean, the, the pain of that makes having triplets look like a tea party. Once the doctors got me mostly back online, they said, look, you're not going to be in a wheelchair, but your career is toast. Have you, you cannot drive 10 hours. Me? No, thank God. I, me, the reason I look like this at 68 is two magic words. No children. Takes 10 years off your looks right there. But what the doctor said is you cannot do 10 hours on the road one way anymore. You cannot lift those heavy boxes and load in and load out. You can't do that career anymore. Well, I managed to get my business online, but I had 18 years worth of knowledge. Right. And there are youngsters, 20s, 30s, coming mm -hmm. up the line. So I wrote the book and said, this is absolutely everything I learned from being a road warrior in the psychic field. Go. And it goes from everything, how to choose a show, how to design the booth, what to wear, all the ethics. And in there, I have some things that are called Corby Gets Candid. And these are the things that you wouldn't really read in a book like this. For instance, I was doing a show up in London, Ontario and read for a 20 something. He didn't like what I had to say to him. The next day I found an anonymous death threat on my table. Now, one of the things I teach people always have a sign in sheet and unless they are you know, disabled, they're the ones who fill it out. Right, you and always pepper writing. spray. Like, you know, I don't think that about that, but if you're, I mean, we do live in America. I mean, America's a vast place, but some of it's called the Bible Belt. And uh, I am a, a Christian because I'm indoctrinated to be a Christian. I believe in God. Uh, I believe in God in my own way, but the easiest way to say it is I'm a Christian. But I also like to play with tarot cards and uh, mm -hmm. fortune telling. So I'm, I find it interesting. I think at least you can learn more about yourself and human psychology. So uh uh I, I i don't like uh go oh like i don't go like oh you can't talk to uh anybody uh but like mm -hmm. you know like anyways with that being said like especially since you said people have thrown vegetables at your head and call you a devil i guess you're the ultimate sinner girl but like you know uh, maybe my lion brave tip for psychics out there is i i just would have i always for ladies in general especially if you're on the road keep a little self-defense weapon it doesn't have to be a gun but i get some police grade mace uh, like uh, like so. this was up in Canada, lovely Canada, believe it or not. But the reason I tell you to get that sign-in sheet is because we matched the handwriting on the death threat with the sign-in sheet. We knew who it was, handed it over to the Ontario police and they took care of it. That's not what you're going to get in most business books. But that's the reality of what we do, especially now that we evangelicals are going hell, pardon the expression, hell bent for leather to make over America in their image. And if they think you're the devil, then, you know, as far as they're concerned, you know, it's open season. That, uh, but that, you said even jealousists are hell bent for leather. That sounds awesome though. What the, I don't under, that expression sounds- Hell bent for leather, me, it's like, it's kind of like ride or die. No matter what they are going to say, anyone who does what I do is a devil worshiper. It's one of the reasons that I got myself a non-denominational rev title because that way I can just say to them I'm a reverend I'm doing spiritual counseling and they back off it's okay, all reverend. a matter of perception can, can I get an amen can I get an amen get some splash of holy water can, can you tell me how you would start spiritual counseling with one of your clients sure uh when they sit down with me the first thing I'm going to say is what is the most important thing you want to get out of your knowing today because I don't want to spend time on subject a if what they need is subject B. So is it the everyday tour bus, house, car, job, kids, okay, God, you put me here, now what? Past lives, who was I in 1642, Belgium? I want to speak to my spirit guide, Binky, or how's dead Aunt Mabel? That's what it is. Mm. If so, now, very often, someone will come to me and they are confused. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. And you ask them, especially if they're women, you ask them, what do you want? And they don't know. Mm -hmm. Because we women in America are trained by the time we're six. Mm -hmm. If we want anything, 
we're wrong, we're bad, we'll be punished and somebody else has to get it. Mm -hmm. Whether it is we reach for a cookie and our mother says we're bad and hands the cookie to our brother and says, besides girls who eat cookies get fat. Nobody likes a fat girl. Do you really want a cookie? See, it's all subliminal. So I teach people it's all right to want. You have your own answers. You have the strength, you have the creativity. I teach people how to believe in themselves. I can hand them the toolbox, but I am not the repairman. Not, not my wheelhouse, not my job. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it, you got right to the point of like, well, what do you want to leave here knowing today? But like, uh, do you think that most people, like, first of all, I would say like, like you said, people come in confused. So asking mm -hmm. them to narrow down a direct question is, it could be challenging. So considering they might not have already been doing a lot of work just to get to one question, uh, what are the most common questions people ask you, whether they're really what they should be asking or not? Does Bruce love me? Oh my God, 95% of it is romance. Um, if they come in and they don't know, I go really Brooklyn on I go, darling, what's biting your butt? You say something like that, everybody goes, oh, it's, it's the kids. Oh, my job. Um, when I show them that I'm not a Madam Hoo-ha in a turban and sparklies, but just normal the way they are, shields drop and they start talking. And when they do, then I can work because I, I don't like three card throwdowns. If you said, okay, I want to open up my own broadcasting studio. I would not throw three cards and go wait until October and fire the second redhead. What the hell is that? Be a card for you, a card for the energy around the business, the brick and mortar location you should look for how to market it, clients, competition, staff, finances, what you need to know and best possible outcome. I give you the tools. I don't know why you would ever fire a redhead. Redheads are hot. I don't, I don't understand. I miss, no, I wouldn't, but I'm saying that's the kind of nonsense that some people say. And you don't want to ask yes or no questions because the scam artist would go, no, you can't open up your business because you have a family curse. How many in your family? Four, you have a dog. And then they charge you $600 for a blessed candle, which is crap. Okay, but listen, so, so I want to talk about this because I do think some people have divine gifts. Like they, they're very good at reading oh, yeah. the, the soul. Like I, But I, do, I think like it's a gift for a reason, meaning it's not, everyone doesn't have it. It's not always out there. And then let's be honest, that, you know, I'm sure you've seen on TikTok where people are making lots of money reading tarot cards on TikTok. Like that's a thing right now. So there are people who are doing it for business, not because they have a gift. Uh, can you tell us uh, people who are maybe wanting their fortunes read, how maybe we could discern who is the, has the gift and who is just looking to reap in the cash? Absolutely. Um, you should be empowered. Um, I, I don't do TikTok because there are a lot of crazies on there. I mean, I've been reading since 1973. I don't need to do TikTok. But you want to make sure that they don't tell you that you're cursed, that you have bad luck, that your life is so screwed up, somebody has to fix it, and it's them. Um, they cannot make your neighbor move away. They cannot get you a job above everybody else. They cannot take somebody else's boyfriend and give <laughs> it to you. Funny. And they're not going to give you the lottery numbers, you know? That's hilarious. If somebody asks me for the lottery numbers, I say me first. Thank People you. People are just in there like, I can't stand my mother neighbors. Can you get rid of them for me? And they're like, yes, yes, for $29.99. <laughs> exactly. Hilarious. That's the kind of bull that we who are legitimate have to fight. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, I don't know what I, 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 um, I have never hired a, a professional psychic, but one time I did audition for like a, a Miss Cleo thing. Remember back in the day when that was a phone operator thing and they're like, call Miss Cleo. I, I have an article <laughs> called Psychics 101, the good, the bad, and the Cleo. So yes, I remember who Miss Cleo is. Yeah, but when I did my phone audition, they were like, they did a mock call and they're like, okay, uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. They gave me a bunch of information and then they're like, do you think uh, she's getting back together with me? And I said, uh, sounds like you should move on, dude. You know, and other things, but basically I said, sounds like you should move on, dude. And he said, sorry, you ain't getting a job. And I said, why? I thought I was accurate. He said, people want to make believe. You just got to say, you guys are going to get back together. Kiss, mm -hmm, yummy, yummy. Like, so, so, like. That's uh, right. That's right. And no. Um, people pay us for truth. But that's why 
frankly, I charge what I charge. And I don't do the, you know, $1 a minute nonsense online. Because I not only will tell you what I see, but how to make things work for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is I do past lives and I do them accurately and people just don't understand it. And I'm a good medium, but I don't just go, I see a woman in a flower dress handing a rose at your grandmother. Oh, can I vomit now? Ask for the dog tags, their name, who they were to you, the year they died and how old they were. That gets me into the energy right away. And my guides almost play charades. For instance, there was a woman who wanted to speak to her father-in-law. All of a sudden, I feel myself miming a pool cue. He taught her how to play pool. Back up in Canada, a woman wants to speak to her grandfather. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I feel myself salute. And notice my hand is out. Mm -hmm. Out like that is Canadian mm -hmm. and British. This is mm -hmm. American. But what he was doing was acknowledging that two weeks before, she had graduated from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Academy. They hadn't told me any of this. But this mm -hmm. is what I get. To me, that's more accurate than it's a rose and she loves you. But it's also the reason that I will not do mediumship in a big gallery because I don't censor what comes out of my mouth at all. Mm -hmm. Now, you want the cleaned up version or the raunchy version. And I'll tell well, you Well, you're why. a psychic. People are going to fight. You can't just tell me stuff like that. What's, man, this lady over here, she'd be tripping. She said, oh, my house is going to foreclose. And... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> something like that happens. So, I, so this, this, look, shoot. number one, even the best of us are only 85% accurate. The only one 100% accurate is God, and God is not doing phone readings this week. But when I was in Canada, I did see a couple of challenging things for a woman. And she gets up from my table. She says, you suck. And she walks away. Okay. Who's the first one back in my chair the next time I'm up? She says, last time I said you stocks, I said, yes, I remember. Because you told me that I was going to take in a border and then I'd probably want to sell my house. And I thought that was all bull. But my daughter got pregnant and moved home. And now I'm going to sell my house to raise my grandson. And I still don't like you, but I want to know what else you say. Don't shoot the messenger. Well, I hear you. Don't sh I'm a Gemini, so I am a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just brave enough to deliver it. Don't shoot the messenger. Um and uh but uh I want to know about the idea of inception. How do we know you're going to plant that idea in her head? What do you mean by plant that idea in her head? Inception? I mean, I just, I don't, you think I'm a, uh, some, a voodoo scholar? I just saw the movie Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio, and I believe the premise oh. is planting the idea, and then the person acts on it. How do we know that what happened to that lady wasn't you predicting her future? It wasn't hinting to her, her future, and then her acting on the seed. How would I know that her daughter got pregnant and needed to move home? She doesn't have to sell her house to raise her grandchild. She decided to. I am not up there manipulating her brain pan. We all make decisions. But in what she role, don't, do you think we all, act, whether we mean to or not, because humans influence when we interact, it's... Manipulation is, you know, it has a, when people hear the word, they think it's a negative thing, but manipulation, like if you think about it with like clay, like God is the ultimate manipulator, creators are manipulators. To manipulate means that you have some control of shaping your reality or for that matter, even other people's realities. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm not but really. That's where free will comes in. That is where free will comes in. You see, people want to know, how can we have pre-birth plans but still have free will? It's like this. free uh, Pre-birth plans are like you choose your college major. You want to be a physics major. Free will is you decide what classes you're going to take. You're going to make it easy and take that courses, or you're going to go through hell and make a double major plus lab. So she had information. Because we are not always correct, then she could have chosen differently. And very often... We don't know what we're seeing, but we tell people. I tend to stay away from health stuff. It's not my wheelhouse. But a woman did come to me with her husband and I said, I'm seeing a little bit of gray in here. Why don't you just go get it checked out? I figured it was bronchitis. She came to me five years later in tears and grateful because I told them to do this. The guy had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, but they caught it very early. And he had four really great years before he died. Mm -hmm. But if I hadn't suggested, you know, go get the lungs checked, they would never have known. That wasn't manipulation on my part. 
that was spirit saying, let's give them a chance. You are just the tool. You are just the information. Because that's one of the things that mediums know. We're not doing, we are the tool and the tube it comes through. A hammer does not go strutting around on your back deck saying, look at the great job I did. Isn't this a gorgeous deck? Somebody held the hammer and whacked it against the nail. Mm -hmm. The one who held the hammer is the one that made the deck. Mm -hmm. That's God. We're the hammer. We're the tool that God uses. That's it. I'm a That's one of the reasons why ego has no place with a psychic. None. I'm a peacock. I, I love to just splash my beautiful colors. But uh, cool. I, uh, I, uh, uh, well, I think it's useful. I think it's useful in it to, to mm -hmm. brighten up a, a sometimes gray world. But uh, let's go back to ego. So ego edging God out. That's what I've learned. Ego stands for edging God out. Um, and and like and because you use the tool metaphor, I want to know you as uh, a, like a medium. Uh, how do you how do you sharpen your own spiritual gifts so you're you're most useful? Like no one wants uh you know a dull steak knife or whatever. I remind myself that doing what I do is an honor and a privilege, but it's service. People say if it's service, why are you charging? You're not really spiritual. Well, if you think about it. Back in the Middle Ages, uh, you'd have a druid or or a seer or something like that. Well, the people in the village would bring them a chicken or a mm -hmm. cloak or some firewood. These days, people don't do that, and I have to live. If you want me to do this work full time, there needs to be the energy exchange. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to me that I am useful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will tell you tough stuff, but... I tell you, this is how you can get through it or around it. I don't just say you're cursed. Look, okay. like I say, I've been through three bats of breast cancer, two divorces, the death of my parents, rape, poverty, abuse. I don't say, uh, you know, it was unfair. I was cursed. No, these were the things that I had to go through to hone this tool, to deepen my compassion, to learn non-judgment, and to make sure that I could forgive myself for the mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. Well, so you you said you're 68, right? And again, I have to commend yep. you on looking phenomenal because I I really uh, you know, I I love when I see um old aged women uh looking fantastic and I especially elders. love when, Call us elders. elders. Uh, I especially love when elders are are um actually I don't even know why there's a stigma to that cuz like in South Korea, you know, you respect your elders and Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 you know, especially if you're looking foxy and you've taken care of yourself, like that's awesome. And, uh, I, and I love to see an elder who is like really good with their movement. They're not in a wheelchair or any, anything like that. Um, and like, so like, I love when they both have health and beauty. And then of course they have the wisdom. Uh, and like, uh, I, you know, I have an old man friend who his parents died young. Um, both of them died probably like 38, 42. So the time he hit 50, he was like in panic mode, thought he, he was done. Uh, um, he's now 78 and he has literally wasted his life fearing death. Um, and he looks like shit. I'm going to be honest. He looks like shit. And uh, he thinks he he's miserable and looks like shit because he's 78. I think he he looks like shit is miserable because he gave up on himself 30 years ago. Um, do you have any advice for people who are uh, elders or, I mean, if, if they would like to be centuries that... Uh, not waste their life and end up being looking like a piece of shit, part of my French. Guys, we all have an exit plan, but we have more than one place we can leave. You could have died of a fever at four, a car accident at 18, falling out a window at 35, a mugging at 50, or prostate cancer at 97. As you come up to these things, your soul says, am I done yet, yes or no? Um, in 2002, my car skidded on black ice, took down a tree, a telephone pole flipped. It had electrical wires all over it and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. At no time did I feel like I was gonna die. I felt like I was in an e-ticket in Disney. I got out with a couple of bruises here. Now, this is why I never, ever, ever let a psychic supposedly predict your death. Remember how you said you plant the seed? If someone had told me, I see you dying in a car accident, I might've died of fright. Mm -hmm. As it is, I'm still here. When I was 11, I went to a gypsy on the Ventnor Beach boardwalk who told me I was going to live until I'm 89. So I've held on to that for a long time, but I have flipped the switch a little bit. 
and said, at 89, I will renegotiate my contract should I choose to. That's how it is. Life is good. You'll never be back here doing this again. If I'm having a wonderful time living the Corby Midline life, I'm going to take it right down to the rhyme. I don't know how much time I've got left. So I'm going to grab every single day, not waste one. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you should do. And I don't care how old he is. He still has time to do that. Yeah, but he won't. Like, you know, like I don't, I really don't understand the people who take care of themselves and the people who don't, because you can see it even in the young generation. Uh, could, yeah. could be the pre birth plan, could be for whatever reason the ego was determined to not like life or like life. What if in a past life that soul was so enamored with being young that nothing else mattered? This is unbalanced energy. So now he's in another direction. It, you know, I know people like that. And it's it's really sad when you, because the youth is so fleeting. So if you only think mm -hmm. your glory days are like 18, oh God. I like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that uh, that's not me, but I can feel a pain in my heart just saying that because that's just such a sad life. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, yeah, I mean, you look really vibrant and, you know, vivacious. And, you know, I think that's really cool. I think that's what the youth should be inspiring to to be you to be looking good and have be full of life as they're becoming elders i think you know like that's way more inspiring than like oh my god i was hot when i was 18 and now i've given up on myself i'm only 22 <laughs> so, so. looks <laughs> until uh my third cancer dance i literally had a dolly parton figure i was built like the old brick shit house i was stunning and when they said, this is your third bout of breast cancer, even though it's second primary, brings you back to no danger. We're taking the wrap, we're taking the ovaries and you're going from the Dolly Parton figure to a fat fire plug with permanent side effects, suck it up. Did I go, cause I'd only been married to Carl for 18 months at that point. Did I go home and cry? Yes. But I knew I had to find three reasons to be okay with it. First one, you don't have them, you can't get cancer there. Number two, the top half is not going to get slammed in the refrigerator door at the doctor's every year. And every woman listening knows exactly what I'm talking about. Third, implants means I'll be perky till I'm 93. That's cool. Got out of Massachusetts General Hospital in three days, shopped for a bathing suit in five, have never looked back. Do I look different? Yes. Does it matter to me now? No. Because I was willing to move into whatever was happening next. Yeah, well, I'm sure you look stunning in all your categories. So uh, I don't think that's really relevant. With that being said, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Whatever is in my husband's dish and I can snitch. Seriously. Um, we have a great place here called Stewart's and they make their own ice cream. And they've got a strawberry sunrise that is just to die for. You heard it here first. Cor Corby will still steal your ice cream. Stay away from her. Stay clear of her. Uh, she will dip your scoop of ice cream. She is the ultimate sinner here. It, okay, what is the weirdest food combination that should have been gross but was good? Should have been gross that was good. You know, I'm such a good cook. I've never had that problem. Um, tuna fudge ripple ice cream, I think. That a friend of mine tuna sandwich and fudge ripple ice cream. She was pregnant and she just thought the combination was wonderful. And I looked at her like, you have lost your brain. Sounds good. I eat a lot of fish. I don't, so I like chocolate. But not with ice cream. It sounds good. I I, I, I just sprinkled tuna. I like to get my protein in. <laughs> shoot. Let's shoot. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. If you had a superpower, uh what would it be flying flying just, yep okay. just all of a sudden you want to get up move go i have so many flying dreams and i'm so pissed when i wake up and they're not real okay so, yeah uh foreign object in the sky shoot it down so i don't i don't know if you can get away with that because you, you just i don't know you'll be in a lab pretty quick and you'll be getting dissected that's just how it is okay now i fly fast <laughs> well, you got to fly really fast. Maybe you need to cloak that with some invisibility. Um, yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's get some Christians off of your back uh, or 
they're going to be right back on you. Do you describe to any religion such as Christianity or absolutely not? Um, I keep whatever I think very private because these days, especially in America, whatever religion you are, someone's going to attack it. Um, do I believe in God? Absolutely. I figured that God is the one that pat tapped me on the shoulder and said, you're working for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, in that sense, do I believe in God? 2000%. The mm -hmm. flavor I keep private. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you had to give me a, a quick fortune reading, what would you tell me? Do you need to see my palms? What do you, do you see? My... Nope. What I would do is I would pull out my tarot deck and pull three cards for you. See you okay. Right awesome. I'm a certified tarot master, which means I've been reading since Moses was in Thunkers. Okay, Ooh. first card for you, King of Wands. King of Wands is an entrepreneurial thing. You will never be satisfied just working for somebody else. You've got to put your own stamp on whatever you do, and if you can make money at it, even better. Number two, this is a man who comes from the heart, and... You will always look for that guy, but not necessarily for you. You just want to know, are there any? Because of the experience that you have had in past lives, you want to know that mankind has at least gotten a little bit better. Third card. This is a card about new opportunities, new people coming in. Uh, and I see them kind of coming through uh, like a revolving door. So the next two to three months, there may be another six, seven, eight people who all of a sudden are in your life and important in ways that you did not expect. Some of them definitely will be helping you with business. Some of them will be helping you with the training that you talked about. But the most important thing is they will believe in you. They will not try to change you. They will not try to tell you that you're wrong. They will see what you're doing and they will say, we will support you. Yeah, did you just randomly pull those cards for me? Yes, notice I didn't even look at them. Ah, all right, pretty cool. Uh, uh, so who is the most famous person you've given a tarot reading to since you've been up and down the coast? Most famous. I know that in my career, I have read, oh, maybe half a dozen people who are Hollywood types, but I read so many people, I deliberately don't remember them. I have one question. I do know I did uh, a full numerology report for William Shatner, but that was like 30, 40 years ago. Hey, William Shatner. That name is just too funny. No, um, no, no, no. Uh, I've been a Trekkie since 66. Yeah, I can do it. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. Yeah, I can do it. I don't know what that I says about it. me. I just like achieving things. That's okay. Not a problem. <laughs> just, I, I, I was never really a Trek nerd. I just was like those little geeks. Why do they keep doing that? And I remember I literally had to set, I literally physically train. I had to train to do the track because because I'm a freaking nerd too. Like, oh geek, what's up? Like, 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 like I don't know. Like I waste my time. I also learned to do the people's the people's eyebrow because the rock kept doing it. I literally had to train my eyebrows like in a mirror training. I don't know what is wrong with me. I do such dumb things. Like, yeah, like, you have achievement <laughs> on all levels. That's all it is, Lion. Hey, but it was Damas y caballeros, hoy me presento ante ustedes para defender los valores del amor, la igualdad y la aceptación. Con gran entusiasmo y convicción apoyo el canal de música de Leon Amor Bread y su misión de difundir un mensaje de inclusión y celebrar la diversidad que existe en nuestro mundo. En la música de León encontramos una voz poderosa que hace eco de las luchas y triunfos de la experiencia humana. Sus letras abrazan la esencia del amor en todas sus formas, derribando barreras y recordándonos que sin importar nuestro género u orientación sexual, todos merecemos respeto, felicidad y el derecho a amar libremente. Rechacemos los prejuicios y la discriminación, reconociendo que ser gay es tan natural como ser heterosexual. El amor no conoce fronteras y es nuestro deber permanecer unidos y garantizar que cada individuo tenga derecho a casarse y ser reconocido en la sociedad. Únase a mí para celebrar el canal de música de Leon Amor Bread, una plataforma que promueve el amor, la unidad y la comprensión. Juntos, creemos un mundo donde prevalezca la aceptación y la inclusión, 
y donde el amor realmente no conozca fronteras. Gracias, y que el amor sea nuestra fuerza guía.